part 16 of uh, Smiling Whiteness, Poetry of David R. Smith, read by the author. And loving lie in my devoted bed, I need a woman who is deep and wise, who will who I love mentally and am compatible with. I have no patience to develop the mind of a woman who I am sexually involved with. I need a woman who is already completely developed, advanced mentally, philosophically, and spiritually, and then develop a sexual relationship with her. <laughs> Hold hand, kiss on lips, then sleep with. Girlfriend, besides, you are cold. My body will keep you warm if you snuggle up to it. <laughs> Love poem. Love from the top down. Love from the top down and rhythmic lauds, louds. Oh, I have sweetened your soul and put a shine in your cheeks and now queen of wisdom. Elysian poet, how deep are your mysteries. Your words put aches in my heart and knots in my stomach. If I must live with desire, let me desire you. When the sun shines, the temperature is 63. And the humidity low and the air clean. It is a perfect day to see you, but perhaps it is too cold. Hmm. Gigantic gaps. All systems fail without gigantic gaps. The anxiety-ridden mind needs gigantic gaps. Efficiency obsessed nitwits, unenlightened, all of their time is wasted. Their dots are not connecting. All problems are caused by rushing. With the gigantic gap comes abandonment. There's lots of free time between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. With gigantic gaps comes gigantic moments of forgetting. Giganticists become gigantic and wear huge turbans. Time becomes long and they have huge amount to have a huge amount of time. They have too much time for everything, thus their minds are locked in ecstasy. It would appear that spirituality is nothing but time management. And stress management is also time management and Cal is time. It takes only a small step to make a giant leap forward into inner space. Some people are late for everything, including the journey to heaven. Mystic poem. Hmm. The Neuro Nuvo. The Nuvo Moral Philosopher. The Nuvo Moral Philosopher. This is the story of the Nuvo Moral Philosopher. From the beginning, he thought the world was upside down and the opposite of the status quo was true. He felt the truth should be discovered organically. That which brought the greatest happiness to right into the body with the least effort would be the best. For a long time he studied with the priest of ancient Egypt. In his quest he rose to be Pharaoh with a long line of supplicants all of for his pleasure. Pleasure being the greater good, his reign was of mixed merit. Both kind to the poor and exploiting the poor, after some education and the best of luck, he decided to sit on his knees holding the spine straight to see what would happen. <laughs> To see what happened, his, in, his intuition was that to move was bad and to sit still was good. Not sure why God created such a world, he fell into Kabir's ocean of bliss. Then that same long line of supplicants came to request compensation. There's a river flowing up. There's a river flowing up. I want to get on that river. The royal road to God. No more flashes of light. Give me always on. Burning heart of love. Beethoven's creative fire. Burning through my brain. Words out of the master are okay words with a charge. They are more than okay. They alter my mind and fight fires in my deafness. Let me pound out the truth. Words need surrounding notes. In dialogue, chimes in the background. Now I hear them. Kundalini blast through my deafness. Please, no more occasional special occasions. When the ordinary moment is turned to silent stillness. 
The devotee of God, the devotee of God says goodbye to his mind. Many people worship their own opinion. The devotee knows them to be fools. Is that an opinion? The devotee is as wise as Socrates as he knows that he does not know. First half hour, first hour, half lotus right, second hour. Half Lotus left, third hour full Lotus, fourth hour in transcendence. Give six hours and see what is your opinion then. Romy says, light up a fire within your soul, burn up these thoughts and words from head to toe. Mass Navi, 1763, June 11th, Mystic Poem. Simran song, Simran, Simran meter. Imran. Athena, deepest of all women. Athena, deepest of all women, called wise. Who is the grower of love, Athena or Aphrodite? Athena, I saw your eyes in Izmir in the city Ephesus. Where is your temple now? Wise man in ancient times come to your feet in the quiet, cool air of early morning. Nature surrounded you in glory. Fava beans, olives, mushrooms, mint, uh, licorice fall from your hands. Your beauty radiates from the eyes. Your body is made of 10,000 years of olives. In my dream, I crashed through a wall and your face was there with a golden triangle. Rhythmic clouds have sweetened your soul and put a shine in your cheeks. When they put her in the museum, she grew sad and her skin pale with all her worshippers gone. I, a foreigner, was there and I tried to catch your feelings when the guard took a fuel era. For a closer look, I, it was a disgrace, but she smiled and looked at me and I felt her embrace. She seemed ready to go with me. Though turned to stone and locked inside walls, she somehow did go with me. Then, actually, I saw Artemis of the temple of Ephesus in Izmir, Turkey, and the guard let me go close to her. Hmm. It really happened. <laughs> yeah. So it's technically Artemis. Hmm. Reading from part 15. Fifteen. Of uh, smiling whiteness. Hmm. 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 Where's our listener? Part 15, read by the author of Smiling Whiteness, Poetry of David R. Smith.